Good evening. My name is Eshan Rao. I am a PhD student from IIT Tirupati. So today in our 10th interaction session, I am going to talk about clustering. Plus, uh, we are going to code uh, clustering based algorithms. So I am going to discuss few uh, clustering based algorithms uh, and I will show two, three, two different ways of how to code those things. So let me start sharing the screen and then we will start. Okay, so let me share this notebook as well. This is the notebook we are going to use today. Uh, so let's start it. Okay, so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to see some clustering algorithm. So some basic about clustering, let's discuss that aspect. Uh, so the first thing is uh, clustering is basically unsupervised machine learning algorithm. That means uh, the data points that we are giving machine learning the algorithm doesn't have any clue about what it is. You just know that there's some data. Now, clustering is one of the techniques where you take the data and you want to create a group, you divide that data into group. So for that different kind of algorithms has been written. So clustering uh, is derived from clusters. So the clusters are basically group of data. So they take maybe 100 points and then based on their different features and qualities, they divide or distances, they divide that uh, uh, points into different different clusters. So we will see two algorithms based on that. Mostly these, uh, the difference between uh, data are basically fine using this uh, different distances and different distance measure like Euclidean or Manhattan and all those stuff. But uh, there are two important qualities of uh, uh, clustering that is meaningfulness and usefulness. So meaningfulness clusters are basically they given a, a specific type of data. They try to identify crucial information about the groups, which actually might result to very important uh, discoveries uh, for a certain things. For example, using gene expression, they can for different kind of patients, which uh, the how they react with the particular medicine. Useful clusters is mostly we use. Uh, in our machine learning or software industry, which which it is a, just a one of the part of multiple processes, where they have a lot of data and they are just segregating that data into multiple cluster segments based on, and based on the businesses whatever they are having, uh, those clusters will help them to target different kind of audiences. So that being said, uh, there are popular clustering algorithms are there. First one is partitional, hierarchical and density based. We are focusing, today we will focus only on partitional clustering and hierarchical clustering. Only on these two we will uh, use because this is the common uh, clustering thing is there. Density based maybe we try to cover in next sessions. Okay, so these are, these are clustering algorithms. There are a lot of different kind of clustering algorithms are there but the categories in which we are talking about is uh, we are just talking right now in, in terms of categories so the simplest one is or the most common uh, of commonly observed it, partitional clustering so what is happening here is uh, the based on the data they will just make clusters without having any overlapping groups that means a point cannot be in two different clusters so that's we call non overlapping groups so in that we have two algorithms that is k-means and k-mediots. Today we are going to see the implementation of k-means. Another important aspect is of this algorithm are they are non-deterministic. That means once you run the code, uh, whatever code you run on that specific data point, you might get certain type of clusters. If you run that code again, there's a high chance that you might get different clusters or maybe same cluster but different number of points. So 
so those things are uh, make it more deterministic because there are some random element and this random element is needed uh, will is put in the front uh, as one of the starting problems because of which the randomness is there that's why we can't get the two clusters simultaneously we will see that as well so there um, so when we think about clusters we usually talk about the the cluster shape so so they are spherical uh, usually we define most of the uh, clustering that you're going to uh, learn about in the initial stages they are mostly you find in spherical shape so for example like you can see here in partitional clustering that you are having this is spherical a different kind of uh, a circular kind of thing is there right uh, but there are more complex are there which uh, are maybe a shape of moon or may, maybe a different kind of uh, shapes are there which is we can't pronounce them but they are like, they are present because those kind of shapes we they uh, this type of clustering algorithm cannot be used okay so these are complex shapes and different sizes the next type of clustering is uh, so again uh, if we have to uh, before going I have to explain this so we have some original points so now based on since we are seeing it we can make it into clusters just by looking at it but we have to make the machine learn understand that how they do so what they will look at the distance between the points so point number a to b b to c something like that so if you see the uh, bottom clustering that is happening they are make into cluster because they are much nearer to the above two cluster that they have made so even you can combine these two cluster because they are more nearer to compare to them but that depends on the number of cluster uh, cluster size you want that is also very important uh, that in this partitional clustering you have to define the number of clusters that dip and that mostly depend on the business application uh, but there are some uh, techniques also available which from which you can identify the uh, best number of cluster size that we can have number of clusters we can have for a data point we will see that as well now hierarchical cluster, uh, clustering is is not exactly too much different from the partitional but it is work on the tree like structure and the hierarchy so to give a simple example so we have suppose considering we have six data points and these six data points has scorpion spider bear lion peacock eagle and like that so we have these six points so what hierarchical clustering will do is it will try to find the points first the first step they try to find this uh, the point which is very nearer to uh, the points which are very nearer to that the taken point so for example if i have take a scorpion as a point i found that spider is much nearer to me so i will combine that as one cluster similarly bear if i take i will try find that lion is one of the uh, closest ones so i take one cluster eagle as take i took one uh, as a point then i found peak as one cluster so based on this i found multiple clusters now if you then the next step would be based on the whatever the clustering that we have then we will see that in among these things what which is more nearer so we found that birds and mammals are more uh, nearer to each other so we made another cluster more than legs or uh, more than three legs is the another one so we found that since we have word, uh, vertebrate and the more, more than three legs these two only cluster remaining we will keep down to animals so now the how the approach goes like is what we have seen is something called as bottom approach of agglomerative clustering now that means each point of mine at the starting i will consider as a cluster then what i will do i will try from those single single cluster i will try to make big 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 clusters and then once i create all the clusters my de the, the decision i have to take is at what point of time in, the, in that clustering i have to stop okay so there is another type which is called divisive uh, clustering is the top down approach that means i will consider all the points as one cluster then i will start breaking them based on the distances of the points uh, till till the point i uh, till the minimum point that i can achieve okay so the uh, the diagram that you have seen here is basically called dendrogram and the beauty of this diagram is right now if even if you have uh, multiple variables and multiple features and all those stuff maybe 100 features and all that you can't actually show them in a graph but using dendrogram you can show it so dendrogram allows you to visualize that how you can how you are building the clusters in a 2d space 
to make the us better understanding. To give an example of uh, hierarchical clustering, so let's see the above one, the blue part. In the blue part, each point they have considered as one one cluster. Now, what they the next step what they are done is, so uh, from one point I am trying to find the nearest point. So if I found that okay, from one point nearest point is there, so I will make that as a cluster. So in this case, this is a cluster. Then above I will make like uh, then I will take for all the uh, uh, points I will do that. Now once I formed a cluster in one iteration, then what I will do is now I will take these clusters and then I will see that whether they are much closer or not, or whether I can combine them or not. So this is how I make more two cluster and then I will find a, I finally take the whole points in one cluster. Now here our decision making will come is that at which point of time we have to stop. So I might stop at only two clusters or I might stop at five cluster. That depends on the business process that we are having. Similarly, divisive hierarchical clustering is same like uh, it's a total opposite of that uh, in the process that means I will take whole points of one cluster and then I will start dividing them into clusters like that and here also we have to take a decision at which point we have to stop okay so in this uh, lecture we are going to talk about uh, algorithmative hierarchical clustering and k-means these two things we are going to do now the advantage of uh, hierarchical clustering is uh, it provides better relationship between the data objects we are having. So for example, I have 10 features, I found that two, three features are very, very close to each other. So those kind of thing I can identify using hierarchical clustering much better because what uh, rather than k-mean because here I will focus on nearest points. So the fee, uh, if I have one feature, most of the points of that feature will be nearby. Then the another features points will be also if they are nearby, they make a cluster out of that. So it helps us to identify the relationship between different features. But the problem is that it is very computational expensive that may takes time to run that, uh, run that, uh, run these algorithms and also sensitive to noise and outliers. Like that means a point which is not at all coming to any other uh, clustering, but because of those noise, uh, it makes the clustering a little bit harder. Okay, that's the theory right now. So we will start with k-mean clustering. Right now we will start with that. So I will show two different, uh, I will take first a basic, very basic example, then we will uh, go little bit advanced of how to do with k-mean clustering. Okay, the concept k-mean clustering is, I have the, all the data points laid out in the, uh, laid out in the graph, suppose it's a 2D graph, then what I will do is, I have to uh, collect k centroids. Now, this k is something we have to decide. So suppose at the first moment we will we can take a random k. For example, uh, I may take three centroids, c uh, c ten rights, uh, from where? Uh, just a minute. Excuse me. Excuse me, Naresh. Okay, sorry. Uh, so the first thing is we we. Take three, uh, three. If you have three centroids, that means we have to take three random points from that uh, graph. That will be a center, and from there we will try to find clustering. So let me show you an uh, example of that to get a better understanding. Now I have this data point. Now what is happening is you observe that how the cluster has been changing here from one point to another point, different colors, and if you can see a plus symbol which is in written in black, these are, this is called centering point. So what will, it will start with certain value randomly, it will take random value and it will start from that center, it try to find the nearest, uh, nearest nodes and then com combine that into one cluster. So once it combines them to one cluster, what is doing, it is then again calculating that cluster mean and finding its new centroid. That's why iteration by iteration, uh, the cluster size are also changing. It will stop at a point where it can't divide much more. Okay, so that's how it is happening. So red initially was very very big, but over the period of time, it found that it is going about left left upper side, and blue which started small, it become the second largest cluster. Okay, so that's how it uh, as a in a animated way we can see like that. So it has two steps, expectation and uh, maximization. So the first step is expectation. That means the randomly taken 
k centroids in this case let's assume three centroids i will try to find all the points which are near to that and i will try to make a cluster so once i made the cluster what i will do is i will try to find the mean of all the points on that cluster and then set the new centroid then again i will start the process again and again till the point i will i will no more further uh, change any centroid or and i can't make any new cluster so that can be done using sum of square errors that we are having so including with the help of euclidean distance sum of square errors we can do that now with that let's start it so first i will just uh, give you a random uh, data that we are having so we have 10 points and we are laying that in the x and y so these are uh, x and y axis points i am just going to uh, plot it in the 2d graph So this is a random point data point that we are taking and based on that we got some point and now by looking at it we might assume that we can make two cluster or three cluster like that but we have to make the machine to understand this right. So for that there is something called as elbow method. So by now I can assume that I can make two cluster out of it but how to make the system understand. So there is something called elbow method what it will do is uh, it will we can't use this elbow method all the time but uh, what we'll do is it will apply the k means algorithm on this data uh, on uh, on this 10 data points multiple times to see that how, which cluster will give them better value so so for so let me write this thing and this and then i will explore uh, i will explain what it what does it mean so let me put some libraries here sklearn cluster import k means uh, this is something you can ignore import warnings i'm just putting if they have some warnings that i don't want so some deprecation warnings usually come so i just want don't want to show that in the output so that's what i'm doing filter warning ignore so I'm just whatever the warning will give by the compiler I will just ignore them now once so now I have the date I have the data x and y so I will try since it's I'm putting in a 2d scale so I'm going to make it as a set so that means 421 will become 1.519 another point 1024 like that so to do that I will I will just do data I will make a list in that I will do zip x and y so I will combine x and y value so, I'll, so if I just do this and then, then something called as inertia I will explain what that means is is basically as mean square errors uh, what we have found uh, what we are going to find in this elbow method so I range 111 so we have 10 data points so i'm just keeping starting from one you can start from zero as well so k means so i'm just uh, then I, i'm invoking the object of k means in that the first part we have to identify the uh, which cluster will suit us so for the 10 points since we have 10 points so we this code will run for 10 times and will identify that from 1 to 10 clusters which amount of cluster will give us better understanding of the data so we will have this so so we'll we are putting n cluster is equal to i that means if i equal to 1 so uh, the so the model will fit for only one cluster if the i n cluster is equal to 2 then the model will uh, fit uh, to try to fit two cluster in that data similarly if model want to fit five that is if i equal to five it will try to make five cluster of the same data now i will try to fit the data in that k using k means and inertia dot fn so inertia dot is a, it's a uh, list that i'm having and then i'm putting k means inertia which tells us about that which is uh, 
at what point of time the square mean of error is getting reduced at which point of time so let me okay once i have this also i will let plot it also that to get a better understanding plt dot plot range 111 inertia marker 0 and plt title elbow method plt x label number of clusters plt y label inertia plt dot show so if i run this warnings okay i need to focus on s n clusters okay it should be n clusters not n cluster inertia inner inertia spelling is wrong inertia yeah i think it's fine okay so it will give certain output like this so what again let me tell you what is happening so we want to identify that which uh, for this data that we are having how many clusters which can properly map this data okay so for that we are using something called as elbow method now in elbow method the Elmer result will something look like this so what we have to once you get this kind of thing you have to where the number of clusters and inertia is given and we have to look at the elbow point from where the values are which is the inflection point from where the values are not decreasing that much drastically so that's what we call elbow point so what inertia is when uh, when you are making clusters it is try to identify the distance between the clusters okay so if i have so suppose this uh, cluster is one is there it has some uh, square mean error something 200 plus now once i have a two uh, number of clusters it has been drastically reduced down to something 50 plus something now when i reduce to three clusters it reduced to maybe 30 something like that but the drastic change came off, off from 200 to 50 so this is the inflection point so if we so what we are uh, trying to assume here is because after this even if i make more clusters the difference of that will be not that much significant so I just need to focus on that elbow point. So in this case, the n equal to two. Okay. So that's what inertia means. So inertia is basically the squeed man of uh, square mean of errors for the clusters that we are having. So what how we have done is here is uh, we have x and y values separated as different list. So here using the in data as a data point, we made it together. So it will be look like. 421 as a as a coordinate it will look like a 420 uh, as a coordinate so that's why this uh, this about so that we can put that in the in this thing so once we have this then what we are doing this is an important thing we are, here we are trying to find the inertia and the elbow point so what here is for a key mean function which we are taking from sklearn we are defining the how many clusters we want so we don't know which amount of cluster we want so we are starting from 1 to 10th okay because why 10 uh, because it we have only 10 data points so we can't have more cluster than that so we want to see that from one cluster to 10th cluster which one will give me a better representation of the data in terms of group so that's why whenever this is there so i put that in k means object k means object will fit that data and then it will try to find the inertia which is the square mean of error within the cluster and and it stores that in a inertia inertia list once we have this we i've just plot the data 
so once we plot data we just have to observe that what is the inflection point here like after which uh, after one point the uh, the difference between the number of having num high number of cluster doesn't matter much so in this case 2 is that number so that's what elbow method look like this another method called signification uh, salute coefficient we will talk about that also okay so once we have this so uh, since i know uh, from that data I, i got to know that okay two clusters uh, for me it would be more than enough so i can again just train that uh, divide that data so in this case i just do k means n cluster equal to 2 because 2 is the found ideal point we have found and then we just fit that data and i just sh show it plt dot scatter x y c k means labels and plt dot show so the k means label is uh, when you are not define not giving predefined data so what it will do it will give cluster as numbers so cluster 1 will be 0 cluster 2 will be 1 something like that so for each point of x and y it is it might have a certain label so it is just giving that and based on that it will just try to segregate the cluster and clusters okay as you can see for x and y we have two points one in yellow and one in blue that's how we can show that we have we have made two clusters based on uh, the data that we are having so this c label will have maybe some numeric value 0 or 1 or some other values based on the identification the uh, matplotlib data automatically color that those points to make it different that which point belong to which cluster okay so that's a basic overview of k means so if you have any question please let me know in the chat box let me check if someone has written something okay i have shared that collab thing uh, let me share it again the, for the people who joined just recently So, uh, so came okay just a minute uh, one error is came so you just you, can you put the uh, m capital in k means that will solve you yeah yeah please tell me uh, sir uh, from this means uh, this elbow method uh, we can uh, get a idea of uh, how much cluster we have to get yes Correct. yeah uh, so if there is a big data or a variables are then ideally we can't we can't use it because uh, the reason will be like the it's only 10 points so i can run it 100 times 200 times also it will be very very fast it will give me the result in maybe in few milliseconds or few seconds but if we have high data at that point of time you have will have some idea about the business case or what kind of data you are having so at that time you have to make some assumptions that okay we need to this type of uh, you have to do little trial and error and you have to identify the number of clusters based on your understanding of that domain so for example you have making a product okay and you have the data of 100 millions of users of that now what you do you try to segregate them maybe in terms of age now you found that the ages will be you can combine the ages into 10 different pan like 0 to 10 10 to 20 20 to 30 just like that so you, based on your understanding that which person will use that product you have 10 clusters so you, what you want try to do is first you try uh, as a first experiment we try to divide using k means you divide the cluster uh, divide the data into 10 cluster then you find that something is not good then you will change the cluster so that is come based on understanding also and based on the business domain and also uh, like this is small data but for a big data if you rerun the uh, this k means also the cluster size will also change the colors will also change uh, like for example for this i might all all the time i might get this cluster only but if i 
have lots of data points 120 200 data points that the cluster uh, size will change because it's a non deterministic because why because at the first starting point the centroid i will take will be randomly taken so for example in this case if you can see my arrow i will might take this as a centroid and in yellow cluster i might take this as a centroid oh so these are random i can take this also i can take two two different cluster also i can take cluster uh, this center point 1 this center point 2 so because of that this k mean clustering is uh, is good for analysis but uh, it will always mostly you, they will give you different different kind of clusters over a period of time that's why so there is so there is no any example like that you have to go or uh, conduct this code first and then you have to no no there's no thumb rule there's no thumb rule you can you can skip all that this thing and you can just write these uh three th two lines k means n cluster uh, according to your basis and you can find the data okay sir thank you yeah okay uh the second part this is a k means uh here what we are going to do is we mostly instead of having data we will try to create a synthetic data so these are different way i'm just showing a different way the process of all the above same is just that how to write because it has lot of options so i just want to show different kind of options that we are going to have it okay so for that uh, here we will generate in this example to k mean clustering we will generate 200 points of synthetic data and in that we try to do a clustering okay and we we make clustering predefined also we just want to check that how it is uh, whether the k mean clustering able to do uh, identify those kind of clusters or not so for that uh, we need to import certain libraries here and this one library will be there called need uh, from which we are going to f this uh, this library will also help us to uh, method to find elbow this use for elbow method that we have seen earlier okay so do that you just have to uh, if you you will find you will find that that k means uh, sorry need is not uh importing properly so you have to use this command pip install upgrade need so just i'm putting all the data this thing so matplotlib for uh just plotting the data need is for uh elbow method data set blob is to uh generate synthetic data cluster is k means silute score is another uh another way to find uh optimal clusters not optimal uh uh, uh just to for i don't have words for that like good way to find clusters basically and standard scalar is basically like the normalization that we do right uh the z score thing so whatever irrespective of whatever data we have we will make that data uh, between minus 1 to 1 so that normalization uh that also we can do so i will talk about that also okay now once we have this let's start with building uh, synthetic data <coughs> okay so so synthetic data or synthetic cluster you can say so make blocks is that so it has few uh parameters so let me start writing the code and based on that i will let you know what the things are there so make blob if i am uh, using so it will give me two it will give me two uh, value it will return two values one is true labels one is features so make blobs so the first criteria is samples how many samples you want okay then number of centers so i here instead of directly uh, telling uh, randomly randomly finding it we are trying to telling that okay we need only three centers so if you have three centers that means uh, we have three clusters okay now the reason synthetic data is basically we are creating synthetic uh, clusters of that and then once we have the data we again try to create a clusters 
cluster using the k means and we will see that how much difference it has so 7.25 this is standard deviation for that and this random state uh, you can put any uh, integer value mostly it is none but you can put any other integer value as well uh, to provide that from where it has to start so so n sample is the total number of samples to generate center is the number of centers to generate which tells about the number of clusters we want is cluster standard deviation so in a cluster whatever the number of points i have what is the standard deviation with respect to each other okay now it will return me two values one is 2d uh, 2d numpy array with x and y samples and features and there's a cluster label so two labels will be a cluster label for each point in which cluster that point will be it is uh, it is going to sh store in true labels okay so this is a synthetic uh, cluster we are having uh, for our understanding so to show that how it is like so the data will be I'll just show you top five features features in this case will be a data point in a 2d space so you, if you make x and y axis in that if you plot this these are the few points that you can find similarly true labels so here we got 100222 so it it is already based on synthetic data of whatever we are having we got 101022 as a uh, for maybe 0.1 it is point coming in cluster number 1 0.2 might be in cluster number 2 0.3 will be in cluster uh, in uh, see uh, pound 3.4.5 in cluster number 2 and 0.2 in cluster number 0 that's how it is now we what we will do is after applying the k means we will see that whether it remain the same or it will change Ideally, if we are using k-means, these variables might change. So that is something we need to look at. Okay, so there's something called standardization. The, the reason we are doing standardization is, now we have lots of this kind of data because they are synthetic randomly generated. So what, I, uh, what we will do is, we try to compress that and keep that in, in the smaller space. That means like if we have height and weight, so you have the range from 0 to 100, say 0 to 200 and the height is also from 0 to uh, 200 kind of like that. Since we don't want to deal with big, big values, we will slow um, normalize it and we'll keep that into a value of certain range, maybe minus 5 to say five, 0 to 5 or 0 to 10. That kind of standard scalar is there. For that, we will use that. So the same as z-score that you might have used in, probably in the statistic code earlier, the course. So we are just going to use that. So scalar, standard scalar. We are just creating an object and keeping a scalar name and scale features. Scale features. Scalar.fit transform features. Okay, once we have this, so I will just show you the top five uh, features that we have saw earlier and after the normalization. So now it is now up from 9, min 11, minus 10, minus 10. From there, we reduce that to 2, minus 1, 1, 0. Like it, it has been compared to a small space. Okay, now once we have this, it's just for better understanding of a representation of data, not having too much high computation for that. That's why we are doing this, uh, this that aspect. Now, uh, what we are going to do is, uh, we are going to define the k-means model. Okay, now it has lot of things. So let me. Okay. So I, I will uh, define that k-means object with different values. So let me show you the first thing. So the first thing it needs is initia initiation is random. So how? So initial this in it has multiple options. So random when we are saying that based on number cluster that we are going to define right now. That's in this case we are again defining as three. 
so randomly it will assign three centroid in the data randomly it we have it has more multiple option but we are focusing on we are just giving us random so it will randomly assign three centroids in the data how he going to three centroid data because of the clusters now something called as n init so n init will run the k mean algorithm 10 times and each in each uh, algorithm each in each iteration uh, uh, using of k means algorithm we will iterate the data into 300 times that means if you if you can see here in terms of that n in it it is only once and in that one cycle of k mean uh, k algorithm it is running approx 10 times sorry 11 or 12 times so for one uh, for one cycle of maybe 15 times okay so for one cycle it is it is try to fit the data into multiple clusters 15 times okay so similarly we are doing that uh, in this case as well says that we can get a better idea that which one is more suitable because every time it is giving us uh, different different values so our ob objective here is to reduce the square errors that we are having okay so for, to do that we are having this and then we have random state which is equal to 42 okay so we have defined the k-means object uh, with these parameters so it will run the k-means object will run for 10 times and in that 10 times it will run it try to fit the data 300 times it try to fit the data in terms of defining the three cluster 300 times now once we have this so we'll do k-means dot fit scale features <coughs> So it has done that. So that's one thing. So when we say elbow method, the K means inertia. If we do, we'll identify the lowest uh, squares sum of mean. Inertia spelling is wrong. Okay, the sm smallest lowest square mean of error uh, is signed for something and the final location of the center centroid because we have three clusters so it will have centroid points so for that to identify that we can write k means not cluster centers k means dot cluster centers so the last point that we are having so three centroids if we try to plot that we will find it we will show that how that that will look like and the number number of iteration requires to converge so even though we are giving 10 iteration we will find that after a certain point it is uh, the output is always same so we just have to stop that so k-means algorithm has inbuilt functionality where after certain iteration it will stop so it is showing that the number of iteration to converge means after that no more uh, new cluster has been formed or no more changes of points from one cluster to another it comes to two iteration so when we are saying iteration is n in it fun, not the max iteration it's the n in it for each cycle two cycle it took to converge that data point and now the main thing that we will see that the prediction of that or uh, that cluster that they have made for the first five points. Okay, so if you observe this points are two zero one one one. So this is find by the k means. So when we create a synthetic cluster, our initial array was one zero two triple two. But here instead of this, one become uh, the first point became in the second cluster, zero point become zero, and the, these last three points come into first cluster. So that's how the data has been changed. Now, if we run it again, there's a high chance that this uh, uh, this thing might change again. This array, uh, the cluster assigning of cluster might change again. So it it is that random. Okay. Now, once we 
so you are able to understand that this is a little bit uh, randomized, the k-means is randomized. So what we have to do is, we have to find, choose the appropriate number of clusters. So one way is elbow method, which we have seen earlier, I will type out how to do that in, um, in this uh, SKLR. And then another is solute co coefficient. So we will do that as well. So let me write for elbow. So these, there's no better method. So these are like both you can use to identify that uh, which cluster, uh, uh, how many cluster you, do you want. So I'm getting some arguments here. So in it, random, I'm making a dictionary of arguments and in it, Ten max hitter three hundred then random state. Random state. I'll just give the same value as earlier. Uh, Okay, now what we have to what we have to do is so when we are saying inertia is basically a a list which holds uh, the SEC value for each k. Okay, so the earlier SEC that we have seen uh, in the first method inertia it's basically SEC. The list is same, so same code that we are going to write. So let me just directly copy it down from the above. If I have this copy, so in this n means clusters, i is there and uh, I'll just pass out the other values. So star star k means quarks. So this basically tells about uh, it is providing the whatever the other parameters the k means algorithm should have. Okay. Now fit data and in this instead of data we'll have scaled features and this k means inertia. Now once you have this same procedure as above, we have done that. Uh, so I'll just use different way of plotting this. So K means use 538 is one of the functions there. PLT dot plot um, range 111 and SSE, what the list that we had of square mean errors and then plt dot x ticks range 111 x axis will be this plt y ticks will be y label sorry no, x, y label Y label will be number of clusters. PL, oh, okay. PLT dot Y label will be SSE. And this, if I do PLT dot show, even though we started with three clusters, there's a high chance that we might get wrong and we might get more cluster, right? Okay, uh, see, save damage. Okay, where I got wrong. Number of clusters, range, range. SSE. Mm -hmm. Widely it should run. Uh, if I put 
x range 111 let me run this again and this again hmm why this is going wrong so x stick should be 111 that is correct plt plot plot is correct range sse this should be correct hmm range is like that x label y label filter dot show it's 10 and 0 oh, okay okay my mistake my bad my bad my bad i haven't properly copied this okay now it should work okay so here the inflection point is basically <coughs> inflection point is coming at the point 3 which is the elbow part here Space after that uh, the changes between the number cluster is not that much so we can use this method now uh, quickly for the other point that is salute uh, so also once we get this also it is good for humans but if you want to and uh, do some other way without plotting this data and all that. So there's a function, uh, there's a library called need that we have put that earlier. Uh, this need locator. This another. Uh, this also you calculate uh, elbow method directly. So we'll use this function to show you how you do that. So I will do KL. Um, knee locator range 111 I will pass the square mean of error Co curve should be convex these are some parameters that type you have to see directly and you have to see the direction which should be decreasing we have to see the decreasing direction once we have this if you do kl dot elbow it will also come and give this to 3 so we don't have to plot this data again to see it we can also use this need locator function directly to find the elbow method which help us to understand uh, the number of clusters that we should have okay so last one before high, uh, before we stop uh, for the break and the for the uh, k means clustering is the salute coefficient so it tells about that how it, uh, how well a data point is actually uh, comes under a cluster so if I, it can there is a high possibility the chance that if two clusters are nearby there is always a confusion whether the point should come to um, cluster number 1 or cluster number 2 so for that this coefficient is there so how what it check is how the, uh, the data point is, uh, is uh, nearer to its own cluster and how far it is there from other cluster. So to use this uh, salute uh, coefficient, so what we'll do is uh, we'll create a variable salute coefficient. I'll just make a list of that. So I'll just write it down. A uh, list holds the coefficient for each k. Now, once we have we created this, now we will run uh, for k in range two eleven. We'll start directly with uh, two, not taking one as a point because uh, if you have one cluster there is no point of cal calculating what uh, the distance between dif uh, different points we should have we should calculate only when we have two or more clusters so once we have this so we will write we define the k means object k means n cluster 
n cluster will be k so it is finding the which how many clusters we are going to have we are just have we are writing the same way that how we wrote the inertia part box and k means dot fit scaled feature and then it will provide a score solute coefficient so solute score scaled features k means tables so once i got the score i will just put that in solute coefficient coefficient dot append score once i run this code solute okay once we have this i will just copy this thing i'll just show you that how it will look like in the on the graph mm. so it is 538 range will be 211 211 this will be solute efficient and uh, x label will be number of clusters and this will be solute coefficient okay So here what we will see is a different kind of graph here we don't have to see the elbow but we have to see the coefficient value wherever the higher coefficient value will be there in this case 3 that cluster that number of clusters that we have to check so here we have mostly have to see the the more the higher uh, coefficient value we are having the more better the cluster will be uh, will be able to segregate the data into multiple groups okay so it's almost 7 it's, uh, so let me uh, just given a uh, brief of what we have done till now we started with discussing what is clustering and different type of clustering uh, categories then we started uh, like we talk about partitional clustering hierarchical clustering and then we started with k means clustering here we try to we plot this uh, use the k means algorithm to uh, create clusters to create clusters we show two different ways of doing that not much difference another important point is the since identify the clusters will be different so there are some methodology already given using elbow method and the solute coefficient method that we have employed to identify the which number of clusters should be better so the in the second part we have created synthetic data clusters uh, using make block function and then once we get this data we are trying to uh, what we did is we're trying to make try to fit the k means and we saw that the results of k means of every time it makes a uh, create a cluster it always changing okay so that's the overall uh, means of partitional clustering that is k means okay now then in the, uh, in the after 10 minutes break we will talk about hierarchical clustering so here also same way we will try to create uh, we will the same way how we wrote the k means we will use same way use the hierarchical clustering uh, to uh, to create clusters from the data okay so if you have any question please uh, please let me know in the chat box how k mean works with categorical data so even like you can use data uh, directly on you can plot any data whether it's categorical or uh, regression data on the plots so it doesn't mean that you it has to be regression point even you can put a categorical point also you can put that uh, in a certain way and then it, it can predict that uh, whether it should come in a singular data or not but ideally you might not need that also because uh, category data itself give you a different kind of loop so having uh, using k means uh, is just an extra overhead you can just segregate the category data based on the categories it is defined 0 1 2 or whatever the different type of categories you are having okay 
So, uh, it's, we will start at 7.10, okay? Let's start this thing, so we can, you can, uh, you can, we will take a 8 minute break and then we will start at 7.10 and we will discuss the hierarchical, hierarchical clustering.
Okay, so we will start uh, doing the hierarchical clustering. So let me share the screen. Okay, so it's hierarchical clustering is another uh, is another method for clustering the data points. It's uh, logically it is not that different from uh, what we have seen in partial in partitional uh, clustering because it's also depend on the distance between the points and based on difference between the points, uh, they decide that which one to make cluster. The only difference where it is coming is how is building of the cluster over the period of time okay which comes into the hierarchical fraction so so here we will talk about algomerative clustering uh, which is a bottom approach so let me show you one a small demo of how it works so we have so, suppose seven points now if you observe this gif it is taking one one point and it start with every every point has its own cluster then what it will do is p6 and p5 will uh, since they are close to each other so it will make a cluster number one then p5 p6 become one cluster and p4 so they found that they are more closer to each other so they make combining these became cluster number two okay you should observe so why this is a dendrogram so while you're creating it observe also the length of how it is increasing whenever it, they are making one one new cluster so even p1 and p2 might be closer than p4 and p5 p6 since it is uh this time it might be different uh they are little away that's why the line is big we can also put p1 and p2 together but that's not how it works we will start with uh the points which have smaller uh, smaller distance among each other that will be become first cluster then first cluster will become a, it's a, in itself a one point so the, in this case from seven points it will become six points then from the six points it will say that uh, p4 is much nearer to p5 and p6 cluster so it will add similarly p3 will be more similar uh, nearer to p4 p5 p6 cluster then that's how it add so that's how we can uh, we uh, we make cluster and over the top at the end we combine all the data so that's how the hierarchical clustering usually work. This is a uh, bottom up approach. That means each point is a cluster. Top down approach will be, we'll start with one cluster and then divide the cluster into individual points. Now, while doing this, where we have to stop? That's the something we have to decide. So the rule of thumb in this is, uh, it depends on the number of cluster that we want. Okay, so how we can define is that define depend on distance and linkage method okay so i will talk about what are these so let's give you a basic example 
so we okay first is what is dendrogram so it tells uh, it, it demands the largest vertical distance that doesn't intersect any of other clusters uh, okay so i say dendrogram is this diagram and the define the optimal number of clusters define the optimal number of clusters what we will do is first we find the largest vertical distance so suppose this is a dendrogram is having now the line a and b if we cut that horizontally with the dendrogram we found that these are the largest distance where we are not having any other cluster forming because if you see that in the below thing uh, after certain distance only new cluster is forming at, uh, at any point of time but here from 0.4 to 0.55 this this is a high good space amount of time where we can find that uh, there is no new cluster has been formed so here the, the number of line it is cutting so in this case four lines that's how it will become four clusters okay so that's how we can find the optimal number of clusters equal to the number of vertical lines going through the horizontal line so of which the lines which is crossing this red line the number of blue lines which is crossing this red lines is uh, four that's how we become the optimal number of clusters that's one way of identifying it uh, another way is also like uh, without any restriction you can use like k means you can identify uh, you can uh, process give any number of cluster based on your understanding okay so that being said uh, hierarchical i hope you understand that it is making a hierarchy of clusters slowly slowly it is building the hierarchy one by one so rather than adjusting any centroid or adjusting uh, the whole cluster from one another it's not doing that it is only taking one one cluster individual points making cluster and the, and the beautiful part of this uh, algorithm is it doesn't change so once you got this cluster irrespective of how many number of times you run this uh, code then the cluster will remain the same the uh, the, the cluster that you find as a final product but in k means it is it has some random component in this there's no random component that's why whatever the cluster that you're going to form will be the fixed so let's start with that also i will okay so before that also let's tell about the linkage criteria that we are having so the linkage criteria it tells about the how the distance between cluster has to be calculated so if you have observed here so if uh, like suppose we have six seven clusters now we have to see that which cluster to be, to organize among each other which two cluster has to combine so for that we have to see that uh, for points we can find the distance but for cluster how should we do that so there are four four methods are there so first is single linkage that is uh, uh, the distance between two clusters is the shortest distance between two points in each cluster that is one way complete cluster uh, linkage will be the longest distance between two points in each cluster the longest distance so they, they are maybe far away points in each cluster and then they are taking that distance as uh, as a criteria to combine two uh, two clusters average linkage will be the average distance between each point so that is one there and what linkage will be so what you will do they will consider as a centroid point from there uh, they assume that and from there they will try to find the sum square difference of each point in the cluster okay so that from there we they try to identify that how we can uh, when they're trying to uh, uh, map the distance between the two clusters they're going to uh, calculate this uh, sum of square differences and based on that the lowest sum of square distance between cluster will uh, come join as become a new cluster okay so this is much about the theory let's start uh, writing this so i will start with the basic uh, same first example that we are having we did for uh, k means clustering so what will uh, we use the same number of data set that is we have 10 points and let me plot that also scatter x and y and plt dot show so it's the same data set that we have taken earlier for k means so we just uh, it is to show that whether the hierarchical clustering or k means clustering uh, gives any different kind of clusters or not for simple data I'm not talking complex data so we have the same data as it is now let's define some um, libraries here so to show a dendrogram we will use scipy library so scipy cluster 
hierarchy import dendrogram linkage so we just took that thing and so first thing we will do is we'll make a, a list of x and y plot that we are having so list zip x and y so we are having this now we have to use the link linkage method so i already have showed you four type of linkage methods are there so in this case we will use vault because vault is more preferable so linkage data would be so we are making the linkage function data method and we have metric of euclidean distance the metric is how you define the distance how you calculate the difference distance between two variables so you can have euclidean you can have manhattan multiple options are there and you just make a dendrogram based on that based on linkage data and if i just do plt dot show so i will get something like this so how should you should interpret this dendrogram is 2 5 and 3 4 are almost at same equal distance so that's why they have the same height so at the same time uh, all these 10 all these 10 points are individual clusters after that 2 and 5 point became one cluster 3 and 4 became another cluster since they have equal uh, same distance between each other they have a same height after that 8 and 9 8 and 9 is the uh, is the next closest distance so they 8 and 9 became one cluster after that 0 and 1 became one cluster after this we found that 7 is more near to 0 and 1 cluster so it became add to that then uh, here 6 and 5 uh, uh, the 2 5 cluster is more near to 6 point so that's how it became one cluster 8 and 9 is more closer to 6 to 5 cluster so that's how they these two clusters join together 3 4 cluster uh, is joining the 7 0 1 cluster and at, at the end at uh, the blue line will show that the final cluster single cluster here that's how you can interpret and identify that how a cluster has been formed over the period of time okay now that being said let's uh, do the simple hierarchical clustering here so to do that we will use sklearn library sklearn cluster import agglomerative clustering we use agglomerative clustering because this method that we have saw is agglomerative that is each point will be its own cluster and then from each point it will become the uh, all the points will combine to form one cluster so let's run this and let's define the object for hierarchy hierarchical clustering hierarchical cluster will be agglomerative clustering in that we can have multiple number of cluster we are just defining two in this case because we know somehow that that how it is it should be euclidean distance affinity is euclidean distance and linkage is wall that is one and labels is hierarchical cluster dot fit and predict data once we have this we just plot the scatter diagram x y c equal to labels the final data and then plt dot show and clusters so it will also give almost the same uh, output yellow 
yellow points and the purple points same as like that so not so we can see that hierarchy clustering also can provide the same similar output like k means as well the approaches might be different uh, but overall uh, we can use any of these methods to solve a particular thing now the last example that we are going to use uh, we are going to use example for hacker clustering uh, that's the last part of this session so let we have imported few libraries here so we will take a proper data set uh, it's called mall customer so I will show you that customer data set as well so few libraries that we have taken like import pandas as pd numpy as np matplotlib.pyplot as plt sklearn uh, cluster import agglomerative clustering and scipy cluster as ch uh, to show the dendrogram thing okay this is for to show to to showcase showcase dendrogram okay now let me pull the data set of the uh, from a real data set that we are having so it's called mall customer dot csv and from that i'm taking only two columns for you to showcase this point i log three and four the three and four rows i'm going to show so let's so show you data set dot head as well so we have some mall customer data where for each customer id we, they have taken uh, gender wrongly written genre uh, age annual income of that person and the spending how much spend they are having so they, they have that data so from here we are just focusing right now on making clusters uh, rather than having like someone asked the uh, categorical data right so we can categorize in male and female but in this case we are just going to focus on annual income and spending score so we just try to categorize the population based on their an annual income spending score that's why in x data uh, x uh, variable we are taking data set uh, column number three and four in this case three and four column values only let me share this data set also with you okay so once we have this data set uh, I will just show the data set dendrogram here so I just to do that dendrogram sch dendrogram sch dot linkage equal to linkage x method var So if we just run this, it will show something like this. So we have a lot of data. So based on that, it has uh, based on small size, it has able to create the data uh, cluster of based on the values that we are having annual income and spending score. So it's look like quite complex, but we don't have to see at the bottom up, but uh, bottom uh, clusters, but we have to see the top clusters that we are having here. Okay. Now, once we have this thing also, uh, we can use uh, this agglomerative clustering directly. So to do that, we define the model as go narrative. clustering clusters equal to 5 
मैट्रिक इक्वल टू यूक्लिडियन एंड लिंकेज इज वॉल्ड pretty much the same step that we have done earlier and we will just do model dot fit and labels model dot labels the cluster labels that we are talking about and clusters okay we have this okay why this is there okay fine now once we have this label property returns an array of integers where values come in distinct categories so labels just are like 0 1 2 3 5 whatever the clusters that they have found five clusters it is showing that now just to print that clusters uh plot the data uh based on clusters if we do this We will just do plt dot scatter x labels equal to equal to zero zero x labels equal to equal to zero and one. So for zero category and first category of variable, we starting from that. then size point marker how it should look like o and what the color should be like so here we are giving red so since we have five clusters let me make that copy this thing and plt dot show so i just need to change here the labels value starting from 0 4 and here also 1 2 3 4 markers will be same the only change will be blue green purple orange if i do this i'll get the cluster based on this data point so it is able to get five data points and that's how you can do now another important thing this it's uh, if you see that one of the point that hierarchical clustering has that it doesn't distinguish between the outliers and noise so if you observe in green and red there are few points which are very quite far away from their own cluster so these are outliers and noise but hierarchical clustering doesn't think uh, much about those things and they just include in the cluster so they might not be efficient they might not need or they might have this own cluster also but uh, hierarchical clustering might improve uh, ignore that unless and until you uh, give more high and high clusters high number cluster then this uh, the red and green uh, the outliers of red and green clusters might be combined to different clusters okay so that's uh, so that's the uh, from my content from my side today so we have discussed in the second half the hierarchical clustering we saw sim two simple examples how to do that and uh, before that we had done k means clustering so for this session i have only uh, this much i have prepared for so if you have anyone has any doubt please let me know uh with respect to any clustering issues or any other thing so no no one doubt yeah uh, sir not regarding this lecture okay sir uh, in the ninth week uh, the one answer is uh, wrongly correct okay like which one Yeah. Uh, so uh, for the G one confusion matrix, determine hmm. the specificity for the model. Okay. Ninth question. 
unless until they they can't see i can't reply because i don't have i can only contact ramesh sir but he's also not replying to me to my mails as well he is so that's the issue from my side yes, sir, just, uh, put, uh, i i i can also put a mail so assignment 9 uh, question 9 assignment 9 question 9 okay fine uh, the answer uh, given corrected by the nptel is mm-hmm. c c mm-hmm. actual answer is a okay i will check that out i will i will write a mail to sir as well thank you mm, yeah okay that's uh the session from my side i think i have mm, completing little half an hour early but that's the content i prepared for but if you have any other question please let me know otherwise the session is over from my side uh the k means as a algorithm or as a code you want algorithm okay let me share the screen again yeah okay so how k means works is it will take some random point on the data set so we suppose we have this point original point so let me take the example here itself mm, here this point okay so we have this graph and we just plotted randomly some points in the graph now i and also i have to define the number of cluster that i want from this data so that's a so to do pre uh, first precondition is i should tell the uh, the algorithm that how many clusters i want from this data okay that's a first precondition so once i got that data th- the first step of k means is randomly i will select any two points as my centroids centroid of the cluster so for example if you can see my uh, what you say the mouse uh, this thing i might take this as one of the uh, centroid i might take the right hand side from 12 and uh, 15 this one i will take as one centroid now once i randomly take the centroid uh, of two clusters assuming i have taken given as two as a input if i do that what it will start doing is all the remaining points will start calculating its distance from the centroid so the below part above part all will start calculating the distance from each of the centroid now once it calculate that like each since we have only two centroid the point which just has to compare that two centroid value wherever the point has least distance from the centroid it will it will automatically assign to that cluster okay and centroid will considered as the middle part of the cluster that's how it is so so in the first iteration we will get for uh, one centroid we will get some n number of points some points and for plus number 2 we will get m number of points this is a first iteration now in the second iteration what will happen that once we get first cluster form it will calculate the mean distance among each other and then again try to create new centroid so from suppose from this point i might get uh, and if you follow my mouse i will might get a new centroid once i get a new centroid again the process will repeat that once i get two new centroids again based on the mean calculated value i will calculate each point with that distance with that centroid 
So what will happen is over the period of time is my centroid will change. So based at one point will come where I can't uh, have new centroids. So my cluster formation will be stopped. The, the more I move my centroid because of the mean I'm having, the more uh, my cluster value will change. The reason why we are calculating new centroid all the time is because the randomly we choose in some, uh, some point, but after that, once we got some cluster, we might find that that a point should be in cluster two, but it's present in cluster one. So that's why we calculate a uh, new centroid all the time at each every iteration. So to show that, to get a visible example for that, let's see this GIF. So at iteration zero, it will start at something. It will check some uh, ra uh, three cluster he has to make. So it will uh, calculate the centroid point. Now uh, what I want to observe, you want you to observe is the plus symbol that you can see here, the plus symbol. The plus symbol considered as, a st considered as the centroid of the cluster. So now at each every iteration, this uh, the centroid has been changing at, at and at after one point after few iteration the centroid will not move that much so once it not move that much that means we got the stable cluster point okay so that's the gist of the k means here again so we have to select the based on number of clusters we have to select randomly three points based on that we'll calculate distance of every point with that centroid and we'll form clusters now once we form cluster we will check we will again calculate the mean uh, distance of each point in within the cluster with that it's with its own centroid. Based on that, we will form we will get a new centroid value. So once we get the new centroid value, again the process will repeat. Again, it try to find that which points will be nearer to me. So again, it will create its own cluster. So that if you can see that in the initial stages, red point red has more cluster. Uh, yellow and blue was less. Now, after the period of time, as the centroid value was changing because the addition of new points in the cluster, the blue and the yellow cluster also has been increased. Okay, so that's how you you can explain the k-means cluster in a gist. Am I able to explain that thing? you can type that if you are able to understand that or not otherwise i can open proper rhythm where it can we can see that how it has been done instead of visually uh, showing that answer can you type out whether you will understand or not Uh, in the meantime, any other questions? Cancellation part. Okay, cancellation part, I'm assuming that how it is changing, uh, how the new cluster has been increasing or decreasing. Is that what you mean by cancellation part? Calculation part? Okay, the mathematics part. Uh, Okay, it's based on including distance. Let me find some image of that, get better understanding. Uh, because I don't have the data points, I don't have small data points where I can calculate that. Mm, okay, let me see using this calculation itself. I might not show the proper mathematics, able to show proper mathematics, but I will try to show you how it might calculate. Let me share the screen again. Uh, or let me find some example in the net itself where you can find key means clustering. Just wait a minute. I'm just opening any um, this article where the mathematics is given. Okay, let me share the screen as well. Okay, so this article is there. I haven't 
verify how it is true but I just based on the first link of Google search I found it. So, so we have four data points okay that is an A, B, C, D. Now x1, x2 is basically the points in if you make a x and y axis 2, 3 is one point, 6, 1 is another point, 1, 2 is another point, 3, 0 is another point. So we have four points. Now once we have this points we have to choose two centroids okay so how they are calculating the centroid is by taking average of a and b and c and d so they are finding some random uh, centroid you can take a and c and b and d also in this case for better understanding they are doing that so what they are doing 2 plus 6 divided by uh, 2 is 4 so it is coming 4 3 plus 1 is 4 divided by 2 is 2 so this is a random centroid it's not even the point which is available in data points taking any random centroid also that is also allowed okay now see the same cd see 1 plus 3 divided by 2 uh, and 2 plus uh, 0 divided, uh, divided by 2 so we got one point now once we get this this random point centroid what we are going to do is we are going to from that cent these points 4 2 and 2 1 we are going to calculate the distance of all these four points so you, for that you are using Euclidean distance. So I am assuming you uh, know that how it do it is under root of x1 minus x, x1 minus x2 square plus x, uh, y1, y1 plus y2 square. Okay. So based on 4, 2 and 2, 1 point it is uh, so for example distance between a and a and b 2 and 3 at 4 at 2. So it is calculated 2 minus 4 and 3 minus 2. So once we get this we get some value here. So it's 2 minus 2, 4 plus 1. So we got 5. Similarly for B, uh, from B to B it's 5, C to AB is 9 and D to 5 it's 5. Similarly, that is for each point with its centroid, they are finding some distance. So 5, 5, 9 and 5. For CD, it's 4, 16, uh, CD will be, it's 2, 1, right? So B in this case is 6, 1. S distance between point six one and uh, 2, 1. So it is uh, amount of 16 followed by like that. So we got some table like this. Now what we are finding that A, B, uh, sorry A, B and C from C, D point. We have assumed the C, D point. The C, D, the distance from A, B and say A, C and D it is quite nearer to C, D central. So we will combine them as a one cluster. That's what is saying. The highlight distance C A and C D is 4 and less compared to A, B and A which is 5. Since the point is close to C, D we can move that in C, D cluster. So we are just putting that in C, D cluster. So we have th now two cluster, one with A, C, D and one with only B. So we are just doing simple including distance. Now once we have this, so we have two clusters A, C, D and B. Now again what we have to do is again we have to calculate the centroid. So how we can find center by taking average of ACD. So ACD is in this case 2 plus 1 plus 3 that is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So uh, okay it is 6. It is showing 6. How come? It is A 2 plus 6. Okay sorry 2 plus 6 plus nee, 2 plus 1 plus 3. It should be correct right? Oh, okay. B is six. Correct, correct. My bad. A C D is two. Correct. This thing is correct. And and three plus one plus zero. That is three by four. Sorry, four by three. So what? I think it's one point six seven is going. So that's how the new centroid we got. Now once we got the new centroid, again with these two uh, centroids, we again we to calculate the distance between each point. So A to B and A to A C D cluster, B to B and B to A C D cluster like that. Now again if we found that, we found that C and D is closer, A C D is again closer. So we found that above picture that we are not finding any, uh, B is not any closer to C and D cluster. So that is how we will stop here and then we will say that we have only two cluster based on distance and we will say that B A C D is the uh, is the two cluster that we are having. So that is how we can do. Now you can ask that instead of uh, how many cluster I can have. In this case I have two but I can choose from 
one cluster to four cluster. Why four? Because I have four points. That is the from minimum point minimum point that will have that will be one to the maximum number of point I have in the data set. In this case, four. So that's why I can have one cluster or four cluster max. In this case, uh, in this example, they have chosen only two. Okay, and this SAC is uh, this elbow part that is uh, inertia thing that is there. So this elbow part is uh, basically at what which cluster I should choose to get minimum square of error. In this case, the value will be uh, I think it is given three here. So it will take three. Okay, I think you have some question. It up to us to assume k value. Initially, yes. Like if you have less data, then you can calculate using elbow method and all that. Initially, you can do that. Afterwards, if you want to recheck that whether that uh, cluster is correct or the number of clusters is correct or not, you might use this elbow method or any other method because computationally you have to do it fast. K means is computationally fast, so you can try it out. But but if you have billions of data point, then assuming k value which will be much better and that will come based on the business uh, case business to business case so if you want to target only certain number of people within certain region so how you can uh, you can say that okay for this region i need only three clusters based on the ages so let's see that how it is dividing into clusters so that's how you can that depends on business to business also it has to be some logical val uh, assumptions that you have to take while deciding the k value because sometimes you can't uh, uh, it will, uh, the points will be not as clear as it should be so that's why more complex clusters are also available in the uh, with us that we are not talking right now about okay thank you thank you very much uh, any other question Sir, uh, can I ask the general question? Yes, yeah, sure. Uh, sir, uh, is uh, the chat GPT mm -hmm. uh, can work on this uh, machine learning or total AI? Uh, it can write an algorithm for that. Yes, it can write an algorithm on how to solve uh, a particular, like if you have a data set and then you say, okay, I want to apply this type of clustering algorithm. So there's a high chance that it will write a, a algorithm for that, but you still has to uh, still has to see that whether it's buggy or not. Like the code that is generated, sometimes it's it has a lot of errors, so you have to fix those errors as well. So it's not, uh, yeah. No, I want that it, uh, the chat GPT, chat GPT works on which basis? That is, uh, so whoever, uh, chat GPT is only an NLP way, like text based kind of thing that means you ask a question it will reply that as an answer it will not do this kind of stuff it will provide you a solution for that by writing a code in python or any other language but it will not if you just give him this data you, it will not take it as a data like for example i just upload that mall customer csv file it will not take mall csv as a uh, customer file as an input it takes only natural language text as an input Mm -hmm. uh, the, what is the behind uh, the back-end process of that GPT? Okay, the back-end process. Okay, so there's something called as GPT, gen, uh, this generative pre-trained models. Okay, so there are different kind of architectures are available in um, deep learning. We we'll typically say deep learning area. So it started with typical convolutional neural network, recurrent neural network. Now we have something called transformers. Now transformers are the latest one. So GPT is built on the architecture gen, uh, based on the transformer architecture where it tries to learn the data. It like to have some that data, I'm just giving a very basic amount. So it will have some auto encoders, encoders, decoders and all that. Some has some attention layers, all those stuff. So they tweak that they customize that data uh, so they customize that gpt model according to their business case now what chat gpt is doing is it has gathered almost all the internet data that is having with, between 2011 so be, before 2021 and 
what is doing uh, they have put in certain form we don't know exactly what ex in what input how they have given the input properly because that is something they can't tell us uh, uh, but because considering it has lot of uh, uh, it, it, ha it has been trained a lot of source code lot of textual data lot of I think video data might be also we don't know much actually about how actually the process has been done but the base is something called GPT models now it now ChatGPT is called is is called GPT 3.5 3.5 version of GPT model. Now there's something called GPT 4 as well. Okay. Mm. Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Any other question? Okay. In that case, I'll stop the recording and I will. Close the session for Yeah, you too. Have a